I'll open the public hearing. Uh, Madam Clerk, are there any speakers? We have two speakers in favor, five speakers in opposition. Okay. If you will call the speakers. Our first speaker in favor is William Davis. Good evening, Commissioners. Good evening. Good evening. My name is William Davis. I'm an attorney in Hope Mills. I represent the petitioner in this case. I reside at 3870 Wilkersham Way, Fayetteville, North Carolina. My office is at 5431 Trade Street, <coughs> Hope Mills, North Carolina. My client is the one who is in the process of purchasing these two lots to put, not a truck stop, but to put a convenience store with a restaurant and a pumping facility, mainly for diesel trucks. Uh, his intention is, and this is something he's had in the works and a uh, uh, desire to do for a long period of time, his intention is to spend about $1.2 million to build this facility. So it would be an ultra-modern facility. Like I said, it would be a convenience store, a uh, fueling station, and a restaurant. Uh, would not be an eyesore, <coughs> would not be a truck stop. There was some opposition last time which people spoke about a truck stop. This is not a truck stop. It's not planned as a truck stop. There will be no facilities that would make it a truck stop. It is simply a convenience store with a restaurant and a pumping facility. It will be open 24-7, employ up to 10 people, uh, be well lighted so there wouldn't be uh, any uh, possibility of crime and all going there. This is something we believe would increase the tax base of the county as well as uh, a benefit him as well. The big thing, the big reason why he wanted to do this is he wanted to build a, a facility where these big trucks could come in and fuel without the difficulty they have now. There is nothing between St. Paul's and Dunn that meets the needs of these truckers at the present time. What happens when they go to some of these facilities like in Hope Mills and all, they have to pull in and then have to back out which means that somebody has to get out there and wave the traffic, stop the traffic and all that for them to get out. This facility, as you can see, they would simply pull in, turn to the right, do their business, turn back to the right, and come right back out. So there will be no danger to the, to the public uh, and have easy access to it. He also intends, and I'm sure the Department of Motor Vehicles will require him to do it, or DOT would require him to do it, and that's to widen the road. He intends to widen the road in front of his facility so that there will be a turn lane for northbound traffic and a turn bound for southbound traffic. So they would have easy access and uh, get in and out of facility. The, he and estimates that if this facility is up and running that he will be able to sell 100,000 gallons of fuel per month because of the fact that this would be the only really modern facility in that area. Uh, and that would certainly benefit the county as well with the sales tax, would benefit the county with the increase in the property tax. And like I said, the, the uh, planning board has estimated there are some 10,000 cars that travel that way. So this is not some rural road. This is a highway. And that he estimated- Finish your last statement, go ahead. Okay. Just the last he, statement. What he's basically doing, he's willing to meet all the conditions uh, there are residential areas that are growing to the south of this area, and they certainly need a modern convenience store. Thank you so very much. Your time is up. Thank I you. I do have one thing, if I might. just uh, I, I hold everybody to the same thing, Mr. Davis. That's the three minutes. Okay. Thank you so very much. I could shed some more light on it for okay. you, but that's fine. If you can Our next speaker is David Pate. <coughs> <coughs> okay. How you doing? I'm David Pate. Uh, I'm the one trying to uh, develop Can you this address here. and everything. Uh, 3670 Heart Pine Drive, Fayetteville, North Carolina, 28306. Thanks, sir. Go ahead. Um, the, the, the C3 you have up here, that is Wilson Trucking. And then across the road is Costco, C1. The C1 you have down at the bottom, C1P, that is owned. I believe by the cousin of the pit stop, which does not want to sell it. Um, I went up and down this road trying to find property, and the pit stop owns 81 acres. There's nothing else available in this area uh, to do nothing. That they have cornered the market on 301. I've done my research. There's actually 11,888 cars daily that comes down that road. 
I've talked to DOT, uh, Richie and Mr. Wise. Um, they are telling me they will not be doing in the next five years. There are no upgrades to that road till 295 is put in on the other side. Uh, I have to put in a turning lane if this is approved. They told me not to come down. It's a $50 permit, not to come get it until to see what happens here. Um, other than that, there, as far as CP go, uh, any commercial property, we have talked to the county about switching it to agriculture one and dropping the restaurant and just putting a grill in. <coughs> so um, uh, that's what we were supposed to do last time. And for some reason, it didn't work out the way it was supposed to work out. Other than that, that's all I got to say. There's, there's no other property on 301 from Chicken Foot Road to 71. They own it all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Our first speaker is in uh, opposed to the case is Roy Morrison. Roy Morrison? Oh, okay. Take your time. We got you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good. Good afternoon. My name is Roy Morrison. Uh, I live at 6142 U.S. Highway 301 South, which is about 500 feet from this location. Uh, I'm here representing the Roslyn community who is in opposition of this rezoning. And if you would look, I would like for all the people in opposition to this, raise your hand. That, that what this. Some of them standing up. <clears throat> The members of this community have spoken with the uh, pla uh, planning board last month and it was turned down, so we appreciate that. I'm here because the majority of the people in this community are retirees. The community has a lot of senior citizens and it's a very quiet community. And we are opposing this for following, the following reasons. The homeowners in this community selected this area because it is a real, quite low crime location and has been for the last, at least the last 40 years that I've lived here. And if you, well, yeah, okay, let's see. <clears throat> 301 is a city uh, service station now. And, and I'm a hell that. And your name? Joseph W. Williams. Thank you. Okay. And I'm an elder at Mars Hill Presbyterian Church. And I'm, we are in opposition of putting a restaurant and a truck stop that close to our church. It is 100 feet from property line to their property line from the church. It will cause too much noise, pollution. And on top of that, all the big trucks that comes there will be more because we're building the loop around favor. A lot of people's buying dump trucks to haul dirt. And we'll have a whole lot of dump trucks, a whole lot of noise, a whole lot of pollution. And the big tanks in the ground, the water table is 20 to 25 feet in that area. And if one of those tanks start leaking, we won't have drinking water. So the congregation and myself is in the community is in opposition of this restaurant slash truck stop. They say it's not a truck stop, but they sell diesel fuel and trucks will stop. So it's a truck stop. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Madam Clerk. Our next speaker in opposition is Ms. Deanna Braggs. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? I'm Deanna Hodges Braggs, and I live at 5958 U.S. Highway 301 South. Okay? Um, I'm going to read this. Good evening. Let me start by saying thank you for allowing us, the residents of Highway 301 South, to voice our concerns. 
Uh, again, my name is Deanna Hodges Braggs, and I currently reside on land that was passed down from my grandfather to my father. In fact, my grandfather Jim Hodges and his brother Sam once owned approximately 375 acres of the land that extends just from the Parkton Red Springs exit to the Park Parkton borderline. Over the years, my grandfather has sold plots of land to our neighbors who have built their homes along the highway in question. We live in a quiet community where all of our neighbors have known each other for decades. Our community consists of retired senior citizens, their children, and now their children's children. It's a safe community where we have all watched out for each other over the years. Our community also consists of two churches, Union Oak and Morris Hill, which is the church that sits just feet from the land in question. Over the years, the traffic in our community has tripled. Developments such as Rosalind Farms and other communities have sprung up. Highway 301 South is a bypass route to and from these homes. Those of us who live along the highway now find it nearly impossible to get in and out of our driveways between the hours of 6 a.m. and 8 p.m. The traffic is nonstop and it is congested. Large, large tractor trailers of, and semis zoom by in excess speeds of 65 miles per hour. Factor in the daily school buses, the mail and delivery trucks, and it's probably one of the most congested highways in the county. Placing the proposed truck stop, restaurant rest stop, would only make access to and from our driveways nearly impossible due to the increased traffic. In addition to the traffic, we are concerned about the crime rate increasing. Planting a 24-hour truck stop in the middle of our neighborhood, in the middle of any neighborhood, would obviously draw more people, more transients, and other unwanted riffraff. Factor in the sale of beer and wine, and it's a recipe for disaster. We fear for our safety as residents. We fear for the safety of our young children, including my daughter, who's 15. We are a community that embraces growth, but not at the cost of our neighborhood. In addition to the traffic, what about the pollution? I'm a cancer survivor. My mother is a cancer survivor, and my father died from cancer. We all lived along Highway 301 South. The pollution to our air and our water lines is obviously another factor. I wish I had time to break it down further. We come to you and ask that, I'm sorry, we come to you and ask if this was your own neighborhood, would you embrace a truck stop being placed smack dab in the middle of your street? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Our fourth speaker in opposition is Mr. Abdu Saidi. And if you would please pronounce your last name for us. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, good evening. You can push that up some. There you go. <coughs> my name is Abdul Saidi. I uh, reside at 1968 Culpeper Lane, Payable uh, 28306. Uh, I'm here to, uh, you know, I'm supported with, with my family and neighbors. And um, my family. Uh, owns several properties on Highway 301 South. One is straight across from this property, and we own uh, two more properties. One is uh, a zone for daycare across, I mean, from uh, this. We don't want to have any more business in this area for many reasons because there's a church close to the uh, uh, this property, and we respected our neighborhood. We have, you know, a good relationship over many years, and some of them are here, and we even, you know, uh, they even signed many, uh, you know, to oppose to have any, uh, like, some busy commercial, like gas station or something in this road. <coughs> we, uh, uh, we would like, you know, to Consider furthermore having a daycare, uh, you know, just to serve the community in that area. We believe that you know, area is not you know, uh, good for busy or traffic. We don't want to have like traffic in that area, increased traffic. And I think the daycare is much you know suitable for that uh, area. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I have those sheets if you want to see them. I'm you can hand them to the clerk, please. Thank you. Thanks. Our last speaker in opposition is Mr. Rudolph Jenkins. Candace. 
Candace. Good evening, and thank you for inviting me to be here. Good evening. Before I start, uh, the deputy, uh, when you go, you taught, show a person a card down there that you're not supposed to go to the walkthrough. Is he allowed? Excuse me, sir. Uh, we, we're talking about this right here, right now. Okay, we right, we no, can no deal problem. with that later. No you state okay. your name and your address. I'm you sorry. don't get the time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Thank you I'm so okay. much. All I'm right. We now. just we gotta I'm, keep I'll we gotta keep. Out. Okay. Your time's running though. Thank you. Doctor. You're welcome. Uh, my name is Rudolph W. Jenkins. I'm a retired sergeant major with 30 years of service, and I'm here on the case of 17-13. Now. You may have heard about the war in uh, Korea where veterans like myself had to go through 27 degrees below zero to fight for this country. Also called the Vietnam, where I served with the 101st Division and the 226th Battalion, which provides water for drinking to the servicemen. I served in three of the five Airborne Division, 82nd and 11th. And now I hear home on 301 South that uh, I have to go to war again because I'm afraid that my water is not going to be drinkable and the air is not be satisfied for me to breathe. I'm talking like I'm talking now because I have a defibrillator and I've just got in the hospital, all right? Okay. So it makes me wonder which is the worst of two evils. Can't see or not willing to see. Now, the commissioners, I don't know your procedure if you just look at a map or do you go on reconnaissance or ground reconnaissance. Now, when you do a ground reconnaissance, you see things a little different. And you can't go by hearsay or just looking at that map. I couldn't. That's why I always took a reconnaissance. Now, my reason for uh, being here is I'm just about at ground zero where they are about to put or uh, want to be rezoned for a business establishment. I'm a business major, and I understand that you ought to make money. But we should also understand that we cannot be bought to do something and end up like Jono. We may not <laughs> be... And That's your time there. That's your time. I appreciate it. But I'll let you finish that last sentence, though. You did say, Joan, I'll, I'll let everybody finish their last sentence. So I'll let you finish the last sentence. You stopped in the middle of it. You said, Joan, and, and Oh, I said, well, we don't do the right thing. When we are required to, we may not be as successful as okay. Joan, Thank ending you. up in the bell of the way. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I got you. Thank you. Are there any other speakers, there Madam? There are please? no further speakers. Okay. Uh, commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Council. Ready with a motion if there's no discussion. Are there any discussion? Commissioner Council. I move in the case of P1713 to find the request for rezoning inconsistent with the 2030 growth vision plan and any other applicable land use plan not reasonable or in the public interest for the reasons stated in the recommendations of the planning staff and is fully reflected in the minutes of the planning board meeting which are incorporated herein by reference second got a motion second any questions call for the vote all those in favor unanimous i'll take the second motion all right, I move to um, the case of P1713. Was he ready to move? I guess he was ready. Go ahead. Whichever Go ahead. one. I'm sorry. Okay, move to deny the request for a C1P planned 
local business as easy conditional zoning for convenience retail with gasoline sales a restaurant for the reasons stated in the recommendations of the planning staff and as fully reflected in the minutes of the planning board meeting which are incorporated herein by reference a second you've heard the motion a second all those in favor unanimous thank you mr <coughs> chairman item 3C is case P17-15. In your packet this evening, you'll have a, you have a letter from uh, Mr. Neville, the attorney for the developer who has asked for a deferral to the June 19th meeting. And I don't believe we have any speakers at this time. Do it. And I think all the commissioners would have got the letter that uh, Mr. Neville was going to be on vacation, asked to defer this. We would need a motion if we uh, would defer this. Uh, so I would entertain from. I have a question. For yes, uh huh. Um, Keith. This is for the attorney. Since this is an advertised public hearing and no one has showed up, what is going to be the policy on the delay? There won't be a, 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 a policy. I mean, he's asked to go uh, to defer to June 19th, and at that time you would conduct the public hearing. We just start a new. You won't have to, we won't have to re-advertise and give notice. That's already been done. But, but one has been advertised for tonight. And to by, have a public hearing. And by announcing it tonight that you're deferring it to June 19th, you're okay. You, you won't have to advertise it again. Okay. Commissioner Booth? I have the same question. Thank you. What? Okay. I appreciate your wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, uh, if I could, uh, if there's no questions, if there, we have to have, actually have action on this. So is the, on the request for a deferral, if I can get a motion. I moved it. Commissioner Fairclaw. <coughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move that we defer the item. Um, sorry to get there. Case P17-15 uh, that we defer it to June 19th, uh, 2017. Second. It's been moved and second. If we can, can we add the part about the public hearing being re-advertised on that? Well, what, what it need to be? You don't have to. I mean, okay. Is it? Is that an amended motion? No, if, if, if you tell me it doesn't need to, I'll support the motion as stands. All right. Any other questions? All those in favor? Voting in favor, Commissioners Faircloth, Keefe. Are you voting? Evans, Wait a minute. Let's, voting let's do this again. Yeah. All those in favor for the deferral, please raise your hand. Okay. Voting in favor, Commissioners Faircloth, Keith Evans, Chairman Adams, Commissioners Council and Lancaster voting in opposition. Commissioner Booth. Thank you. Uh, Item 3D is a minimum housing code enforcement case. The case number MH 1659-2017. Mr. Walters. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, this case is located, um, the property location is 7336 High Pony Trail, which is in the Upper Church Sands subdivision. Um, this is a manufactured home that has been an ongoing problem uh, for uh, about five years. We had an earlier case on this. Um, we allowed the property owner to secure the home and with the understanding that he would keep it secure uh, and start repairs when he could do it. Um, he failed to do that. We got several complaints from the sheriff's office, so we reopened the case on it. Um, it has been used for illegal activity, it's unsecure. Mm -hmm. The property owner came to my office um, after he received our notice and asked for an extended period of time, um, which I granted him so he could get together and figure out whether he could do something with the property. Um, he returned at the end of that time period um, and expressed to me that his interest in the property was Basically, he didn't have the funds to fix the home, and he was tired of messing with it, so he wanted to let the process take its course. 
So we're here tonight asking for an order for demolition. Any commissioner have any questions? Is the property owner here tonight, Mr. Roberts? I don't believe so. Okay, Mr. thank you. No question. Uh, then I'd entertain the motion. Oh, well, I guess I got to open the public hearing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are there any speakers, Madam there are Clerk? No speakers. I will close the public hearing and I'll call for uh, a motion. Uh, Commissioner Keith. I'll take it. Um, make a motion to adopt the order and report the minimum housing inspectors the true facts in this case and order the property owner to remove or demolish the dwelling within 30 days. To order the inspector to remove or demolish the dwelling if the owner fails to do so and impose a lien on the real property for the cost of such action. And to direct the clerk to incorporate the foregoing findings and orders in an ordinance certified by the chairman and record the same at the Register of Deeds. Second. It's been moved and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, since item number four was moved to the public comment period, we'll move to item number five, which is nominations to boards and committees. Thank you. I've got the uh, ABC board, two vacancies. <coughs> i got Mr. Commissioner Booth. Uh, Mr. Chair, this time I'd like to nominate, put the two names for the two vacancies of Lee Bachman and Kenneth Edge. Okay. Commissioner Council. I wish to nominate Ms. Tammy Sinclair, who is sitting in the back. Would you please? Wave your hand. Recent graduate. Of Citizens Academy. Of the Citizens Academy. Any other uh, nominations? All right. We will go to appointments to boards and com committees. I'd call on uh, Vice Chair, uh, Mr. Evans. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I move to appoint Adam Collier to the Fayetteville Area Convention and Visitors Bureau Board of Directors. Steve Harper to the Jury Commission, and Manish Mehta to the Tourism Development Authority in their respective positions, sir. Second. Any questions? It's been moved and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you so very much. So I would, uh, that is, before we make, take a motion to go into closed session, seems to be uh, uh, the end of that agenda. So I will call on Ms. Jenna, if you come forth, and Stephen, if you come forth to the uh, to the microphone at the end of the day. Uh, you all sat through our, come on up, <laughs> and uh, sat through our meetings, and this gives you an opportunity uh, to further introduce yourself and tell you what, uh, how this meeting went and uh, how you enjoyed it or didn't enjoy it. So first with introductions, hi, I'm Jenna Neighbors. I'm a senior at Massey Hill Classical High School, and I've been a part of the Fayetteville Cumberland Youth Council since its reestablishment in 2014, and I think it's been very, crucial um, to my development as a leader, and I'm going to attend NC State in the fall as go. a park scholar. Do you like that, a park scholar? Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll be a park, park scholar, scholar and one of Whoa, the pillars. I won't never do, but go ahead. <laughs> was leadership, and I feel like being a part of the Youth Council definitely helped to develop my leadership, and I'm very thankful for the opportunity. And how did you enjoy the meeting tonight? I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very insightful, and I like to see how actively involved our citizens were in the local government and I like to see more about the government. I've attended a few city council meetings, um, but this is my first county commissioner's meeting and I'm just very glad to be here. I'm not gonna put you on the spot, but I know which one you enjoy better. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> and we thank and you, you get out that. before you right, get and home and do you your that. homework, so you go ahead. <laughs> Hi, my name is Stephen Ferran. I have been in youth council for less than a year and so far it has granted me so many different opportunities to better improve the community and being here tonight really opened my eyes to how involved the community is. Okay. And thank you so much for having us. And thank if you, you come right. around. See where you go to school? Work. Pine Forest. <laughs> That's right. Pine so you got, you, got, you got some Pine Forest people here, so we, we, we allowed them to have a little bit. If y'all come around, we'll meet you. And, uh, <coughs> Where's my camera? Where's my camera? The city tries to steal my city scholarship. I know it. Have 
Hey, that's my NC State person. Fox gone. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready to go.